all of the little details you see on each of the transformers had to live somewhere inside of the car. That looks so real. It's like perfect handheld motion, perfect motion blur. The thing that's struggling most here isn't necessarily the visual effects, it's the filming. Dude, the more we watch this, the better it gets. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so dumb. Wow. Thanks to Vessi for sponsoring this episode. Stick around to the end so you can find out how to get $25 off of each pair of Vessis. Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. I'm joined on the couch here by Nico and Sam. We got some clips we're gonna be looking at today. I really wanted to look at some Transformer stuff, but Nico, you wanted to look at a specific shot from a more recent film. There's that one clip from Black Widow. It's about time we looked at it. I think it's time, it's been requested a lot. We strongly believe on this show that there is value to be gained from academically criticizing the work of others. And how can you make it better? Let's jump in. So everyone's on a green screen. That's fine. Boom. Boom. Wee. This little smoke trail coming off her feet too. Yeah. It's really subtle. You know what? I'll be honest. Not that bad. It's really not that bad. It's this shot that everyone's talking about really isn't the bad shot in this scene. It's the green screen stuff right before it happens that is jarring well, to me. The thing that is bugging me most about this shot is that there's like a super unnecessary amount of darkness right over her face. Why is that not working? <laughs> it's like they specifically darkened her silhouette. It's and like an anti-vignette. What we're dealing with here is a situation where somebody was given footage of this actress, clearly filmed indoors, and then it's like, okay, and she's going into a scene where it's bright and sunny in the Arctic. You can be the best VFX artist in the world, but you're dealing with, here's a picture of somebody not taken outdoors, and you have the background just outdoors, you need to bring them together somehow. Where is she looking? She's not looking at Scarlett Johansson. Dude, she's looking at my knees right now. <laughs> she's literally just looking below the camera. Yeah, it kind of feels like a reshoot kind of oh, situation yeah. where it's like, hey, this isn't part of the main production here. It's like, hey, Florence. Pew. 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 Puh. Whatever her name is. <laughs> we, we need you for like a half hour. We're going to have you like do the self-sacrifice thing. So we're going to do these two shots of you yelling and then uh, we're going to yank you on a wire. I mean, even if it's not a reshoot, it just, they clearly had to pick it up quick. They didn't worry about matching the lighting in the environment. They didn't worry about eye lines to the same degree. They're setting themselves up for challenges because their hair is blowing in the wind, which just gets really hard to key. So I think what you're saying, Nico, is that the thing that's struggling most here isn't necessarily the visual effects, it's the filmmaking. I think it's also very important to note that this was essentially a COVID movie. A lot of this movie was created after lockdown happened, and so that introduced a whole host of problems that we never really get to see in the final product, you know? They probably had a skeleton crew in order to shoot these sequences here. And ironically, what would have fixed this if they just decided to shoot this outside? What would you guys do to try to make the shot look better? All right, I mean, I think the biggest thing here is that there's like this weird balance between the brightness and the darkness. So right away, I would just put a lot more heavy moving smoke behind her and less in front of her. And maybe if I was actually filming the shot, put her eye line a little bit more to the side. <laughs> <laughs> So if you can put anything you want in the background, maybe don't start with a hot white cloud. Maybe just put a bunch of thick smoke behind her so it justifies her being dark. And then throw a bunch of like embers in front of the camera so you got these little like Dude, hot yeah. sparks flying across. Yeah. I mean, I think there are some, it could use a lot more like particulates in the air. Yeah. I think this movie got a lot more hate on the visual effects than it deserved, certainly. But that scene, maybe those shots in particular deserved it. This is a pretty beefy clip here. Anything that involves 80s George Lucas or Steven Spielberg or ILM, you know, there's like a deep dive. And this is just one scene from the Temple of Doom. I wanted to point out this one because every wide shot we can see of an environment is like a miniature. How they got some of these shots, I don't know. It looks, they look so good. Like, oh, you must have just built <laughs> tracks and carts and had them go on well, them. We're mean, seeing shots of tracks and carts going, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, look, he, that's, that's real. There's no compositing happening there. That shot. Okay, oh, that, okay, there's something going on there. I mean, obviously, I saw obviously. Like, some, some matted edges there, but like... It might have been blue screen. 
Yeah, right there. That's gotta be blue screen because you look at the lighting on her hair. Oh yeah, you can see the blue spill in her hair. Her hair has like a little bit of like blue tinging to it. So I guess I'm still just not understanding what exactly is miniature here. Let's just go through. I'll just say miniature. Like they, miniature. Like, miniature. Stop so, motion. Okay. That's stop motion? Yes. I, I buy that for the whole environment, <laughs> yes. but I'm looking at real people in those minecarts. Wait, wait. Let's see the side shot again. Was that dolls? Watch it. Boom. Yes. Dolls. <gasps> Wow. Those are dolls. Whoa. I know, right? Whoa. I couldn't tell in the first one, but now that I'm looking at it paused, it's like very clearly dolls. I can't help but notice they have fantastic motion blur on the shots also. I was noticing that too. So is that more of that sort of like it's gotta be Dennis Muir and Go Motion stuff? It's gotta be. Just so we're on the same page, is Go Motion the idea of like you have everything moving while you take your exposure? Yeah, you set up everything and then like you have the camera and whatever is going to move, move when you hit the shutter. So it's like click. So yeah, this is go motion, but now you're having dolls animated in stop motion at the same time the go motion's happening. Every technique under the sun is used in this scene. So they do a really good job blending like all these different techniques together because we have our live action plates here. We have this here. That looks so real. It's like perfect handheld motion, perfect motion blur. That's what's blowing my mind is that they managed to actually replicate this sort of like realistic camera motion, this camera shake on top of everything being stop motion. The cameras are mounted onto motorized heads. So they are able to program in like tilts and moves okay. as things are happening. One thing you'll notice is that in real shots, they have torches burning and they have like actual defined smoke with like curls. Yeah. And they don't have any of those in the miniature shots, which is to say in miniature, all the scale would be wonky. If you wanted to have torches in a miniature scene, they'd literally be like little candles. Some of the blue screen shots look like rear projection to me. It's because it matched the lighting so well. Back in the day, if you did blue screen or green screen, like it was a big deal. Everybody comes out and they work just to get two shots for the entire day. These days, a lot of green screens like, throw it up, record, done. Okay, moving on. Yeah, you know, Black Widow style. <laughs> Black Widow style. So if you guys have already seen the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once, that kid is the dad. Short round. Short round. Okie dokie, Dr. Joe's horn here, potato. <laughs> Hey, we're YouTubers. You know what that means? It means it's time to time to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> first take, first try. We're keeping that. That's the one to use. <laughs>First Transformers movie, it came out in 2007, and this particular sequence I was in love with. When we talked about the first Transformers movie last time, it was like the fifth episode in this whole series, and we were kind of mostly just talking about the rendering, how they finally figured out global illumination and using HDRIs and proper like light values and all that stuff. But we didn't really talk about one of the very important things of the scene, which is the animation. These are robots that are transforming, not morphing. Their primary goal was to make sure that there was no change in scale. You couldn't like grow. So that meant that all of the little details you see on each of the Transformers had to live somewhere inside of the car. They always have some sort of like way to fold together and then hide inside of the car. Now, the biggest difference between the first movie and the second is that the first movie, they allowed those pieces to kind of clip into each other a little bit behind the scenes. On subsequent movies, they made more of an effort to make sure that every piece had an actual individual like volume that it could sit inside with the car. <laughs> That's a great transition of like a real truck to the CG transformation. Or wait, is that a CG truck the whole time? I think this is a real truck for the majority of the shot. Like I'm pretty sure that whole rear side panel of the truck is fake and then the front was fake for the majority oh, of the time we oh, saw it. Oh, actually that's a half and half shot. That's like a half 3D, half comp shot. Yeah, like look at the headlight. Look at that flawless like sun glint coming off of it and then it moves out. I'm pretty sure that's a 2D track oh, where they're just taking part of the truck. Oh, and interesting. And attaching it to the 3D animation. Like a little bit of like projection? Yes, yeah, part of the shell. So that way it's like this weird hybrid. One more thing I wanted to point out about this trucky shot. Look at the shadow on her face. She's in sunlight. And now she's in the shadow. And then whoop, back to sunlight. That is a real shadow. It's gotta be. Which means that they had to very precisely have a flag go out and come back. 
it's like so simple, but it really blends it. But it's also in slow motion. That's a very fast camera move. And they just knew going into this shot that, you know, the camera's pointing upwards. There's a transformer flipping over her. It's going to be casting a shadow on her. I think I put my finger on it for why these Transformers 1 shots have so much impact. And that's because they're really using a lot of the guides from like animation, where it's like, you know, set up and pay off and squash and stretch and anticipation and like all those things that make an animation feel satisfying when you see it, they're putting into here. Like here, when, when Starscream takes off, like, you know, the camera goes up and it's, <gasps> You know, it's that rubber band stretch and then release, yeah. right? And if you go to like that shot of like all the Transformers fighting in that town in Transformers 5, it's just like orbit shot. Yeah. <laughs> the drone you know? pilot is like, what, what's the shot? It's just, just kind of, you know, noodle around up there. <laughs> yeah, it's like orbit shot. The guy literally rolls over and then floats away. <laughs> he like rolls up on the building and then whoop. Yeah, there's no like squat, jets turn on, shockwave, boom, takes off, roof collapse, and it's like, bring. <laughs> So the second movie, I think, suffered the most from the whole endoskeleton problem. You couldn't tell at all who was fighting who. Yeah. But this scene right here was incredible. <laughs> this was an IMAX scene. They shot this in IMAX. And I remember just seeing freaking Optimus wielding full-on trees. It's funny, like, because you're right, this scene's really cool, but in IMAX, when you're on the giant screen, the handheld camera shakes became way too hard to track because you're looking at like 40 feet swoops from one side of the screen to the other. It's like, ah! I remember seeing it in theaters in IMAX, and I was just like, I'm like in a giant earthquake sphere right now, and I, it, it was really difficult to comprehend the scene. If you're gonna make a movie in IMAX, you should probably like have an IMAX sized screening room where you're like reviewing stuff constantly. <laughs> Wait, go, go back to where he tears, tears that guy's face apart. It's like a weird low quality, like smoke puff. Like, ah! like the frame rate doesn't match. That, <laughs> you might, be, that might, that? might be the YouTube thing. No, that's our, those are mistimed elements right there. That's so blatantly- I'm pretty sure that's the YouTube rip. No, but everything else is moving just fine. No, it's not. You can, there's no. a frame rate stutter on the entire shot. No, the frame rate stutter on the- On the smoke puff, yeah, I know. It's different than the movement of the rest of the Wait, shot. Wait, because Christian, it's type, suffering most from the interpolation. Just type in a uh, forest fight, Transformers forest fight, and let's see if that exists. Oh, that's funny. I think that's a janky element that's been retimed. All right, Ren, let's find out. Let's see that little smoke puff. What we're seeing is this weird interpolation thing happening. What? It's so real! It's real! <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? Is that like a smoker or 16? They didn't match the frame rate of their smoke pot. I don't think we can fairly like view <laughs> this if we're watching on YouTube. All right, time to buy the movie. Is that, is that like a Wilhelm scream kind of thing? Where the, so the effects artist was like, I'm going to sneak it in. We're actually going through with this? We're, we're going to- yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, this is yes. fun. This is hilarious. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's real. real. It's, it's real. real. <laughs> it's real. Maybe I'm just in denial. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, I know. I'm it's saying like, it's, it's real. It's awful. No, I know. I know. That's why I was like, "There's no way." Everything else in the shot is amazing. If this is not like a nitpick. Like I think we both saw it like immediately. We all saw it. We all <laughs> we, saw it instantly. Yeah, we, we all saw it like on the very first viewing <laughs> of that shot. We just discovered. A wonky in your face effects thing on top of like million dollar footage. This feels like somebody else going into ILM's shot and being like, it's missing something. Everything else is like the most expensive stuff. And then I'm seeing like like a 99 cent after effects <laughs> after effects mistake. What President Val is like, my 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 nephew is coming in. Look, you guys have to let him do at least one thing. It's he really screen. wants to use your computers, yeah, sir. Like How do you make things slow motion in this program? <laughs> Just add frames to it, right? <laughs> we literally just bought this movie on Amazon Prime to see for certain if that was legit, and it was legit. <laughs> Freaking sport! Dude, the more we watch this, the better it gets. <laughs> it's it's so dumb. Wow. Oh boy. We talked a lot about Transformers today. If you want to hear us talk more about it, well, there, we talked about it a lot, and it's on the extended episode on our website, quarterdigital.com. You can get a free trial. Check it out. Tomorrow is a really, really cool Corridor Crew episode. We visited Adam Savage, and he gave us a tour of his whole cave and showed us all of the really cool movie props that he's fabricated over the years. He has so much cool stuff that he has made and accumulated over the years. It was honestly just an awesome excuse to hang out and geek out about cool stuff. Consider subscribing so that you don't miss out. 
Okay. I heard that Jordan is uh, saying yes to Bessie, courtesy of today's sponsor, Bessie. And I just, I really care about these integrations and I want to make sure that they're in good hands. Hey, Jordan. Huh? Hey, Jake. Welcome back. Listen, I, I know that you've been doing a great job with the Yessie to Vessie thing and people have been liking it, but I just gotta know, you know, if you're saying Yessie to Vessie, you gotta pass the Vessie testies. So I just wanna make sure you know what you're saying about Vessie, Yessie? Say no Lessie. So say you got your besties on, right? And you're in the rain and it's getting kind of messy. What do you do? Well, I just take them off and go rinse them in the tubby. They're waterproof. And your socks will still be dry? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Are you just now finding out about Vessies? No. I, in fact, I know of a secret patented material that Vessies have in them, and I bet you can't tell me. You're talking about Dymatex. <laughs> Dymatex is a patented material that keeps you warm in the winter and cool in the summer. How did you know about this? That's why I wear them all the time. Work out in them. I wear them in those socks because they have an antibacterial sole. Working out and then no socks and they don't smell? You didn't know about that either. Man, okay. Mm. Are you sure that somebody like me could say yesy to Vessie? Oh, absolutely. As long as you're okay with a shoe that's 100% vegan and sustainably made. Come on, just say it with me. Yesy, wait, Yesy to, to Vessie. Yesy, you gotta make a two in between though. That's the really hard part. <laughs> <laughs> a two? You gotta quickly contort into a two. <laughs> How do you do the two? Say Yesy to, say Yesy to Vessie. Do you think Jordan passed the Vessie Tessie? I think she passed the Vessie Tessie, and hey, you know what? I, I need to pause this. Go to Vessie.com slash Corridor Crew. Call me micromanagerial, but I don't think that's necessary anymore. You know, I don't think I don't think I'm needed here. So I will say I am who I am in these brands because I've learned from the best. Really? So yeah. <sighs> that's so nice. Jordan, do the honors. All right. Well, you know it. Just go to Vessie.com slash Corridor Crew. The link is right below. So you can get $25 off of each pair of Vessies. And don't forget, always say yes to Vessi. It takes a lot of time to figure out the best clips to watch. There's so many clips out there and we don't have the time to do the research and figure this out. Let us know in the comments what we should take a look at. It could be bad, it could be great, it could be anything in between, let us know. It's such a treat when we're watching these clips and we actually discover like a really janky element that we can just sink our teeth into. Uh, I'm so sorry for whoever did that, um, but you're bringing us so much joy, you know? Really, what is the purpose of art? But anyways, <laughs> consider subscribing. I'll see you guys uh, in our video tomorrow.